picture a group of tourists, British maybe, on a cruise ship touring our east coast. The Statue of Liberty stands tall as she raises her torch, a symbol of our country's perseverance. It means freedom. Welcome to America, land of the free, home of the brave, built by the enslaved. And these tourists take pictures, print out our green lady, frame it on their office desk, and consider themselves cultured. Flash back 400 years and find yourself on another ship. On this vessel, there are no boardwalks or safety rails. The cargo rests underneath. Chained foot to foot, wrist to wrist, the stench of vomit and filth is pungent in the humid air. The meals are few, the humanity is scarce, and those who don't sit dead are praying they will soon. White supremacy hit them like an iceberg in warm waters. For pilgrims and passion by non-violent religion we were frequent in our perjury as we stole ebony people like river stones, chiseled them into slaves, and put them in our pockets until the stream ran empty. We were not rookies in this game. We were familiar with genocide, native culture cracked and dried. Every girl has seen Pocahontas. Tell me, was John Smith worth it? Because the process of claim and conquer does not make a land ours if we took it from those who would have shared it with us. We traded people like pennies and threw them away when they were tired of being spent when what we reaped turned to green today. We rest easy on their bones. Their shouts still muffled by their sirens. The green lady welcomes foreigners, but not those who wish to stay. She turns a blind eye to check papers. All those with accents and dark skin must go. They don't belong here. This land is your land. This land is my land. They can leave their food for us to eat, their clothing for us to wear on Halloween, their children for us to foster each week, but their bodies would soil our holy grounds. They are not clean and pure like us, as if our hands are not stained with blood. Dictate what gives us the right to deny a Hispanic boy an education, what makes it just to arrest an unarmed black child who said it was okay to sweep the only true Americans left under a rug and call it a reservation. Racism does not stem from ignorance, it stems from greed. And when our love for money and power overcomes that, overwhelms that for mankind, we truly know apathy. A raised Confederate flag, the burning of a church in Charleston, a mother removed from her children too quickly to say Los Quiero is not culture. When I turn on the news and see a black man taste for riding his bike on the wrong side of the street, I do not think oppression. I grew up with the idea planted in my mind that this was justice. The police officers get a slap on the wrist. How much is a colored man's life worth? It never crossed our mind that the answer was our nation. He is what he put into our foundation. When a white girl planting trees is a headline and a black girl's work does not even make the paper, I begin to question who is writing the articles. When bleached families sit in their cookie cutter homes and complain of Mexicans taking the jobs they never worked for, I wonder who deserves a promotion. When the first word my dad uses to describe my principal is black, not tall or strong or kind, it makes me think about my education. In our melting pot country, the closest thing you get to safety is being a white male. And when you are playing limbo on a bar far too low, all you can do is close your eyes and hope for the best. You pray that God sees the imbalance. But he is too busy responding to upper middle class prayers. So I suppose the burden of equality falls to us and how much we are willing to give for freedom.